do the sniff test? Okay, here. Here's this. She approves of the three and a halfs. How about the three and a half plus? Okay, she likes the three and a half plus a lot. Oh, and what about the fours? Eh, kind of. I think, uh, when she likes the three and a half plus, it was the best. So, um, I'm gonna use one of these today. Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie. This is Camille. And I'd like to welcome you to another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in today's video, I am going to give you a couple of little tips on articulation. And it's kind of been the theme of the week for many of the lessons that I've been doing. Um, and here in Illinois, it is the season for all state and all district auditions. And so I've coached a lot of kids on, on their, um, their scale sheet. The ILMEA scale sheet is all major minor scales articulated all up and down and you gotta do it under three minutes. It's really not that hard to do it in under three minutes, but it's very hard to do it all articulated. So um, anyway, um, you guys aren't going to get a scale sheet. You guys are going to get an etude today. But before we get started, I want to remind everybody that my channel has a Patreon page. And if you like what I'm doing here, I've got a tier just for my YouTube followers. It's a $3 tier. Pretty soon I am going to restructure some of the higher tiers in Patreon. However, I haven't done that yet. So if you want to get on board and just jump on the $3 tier and wait until I have some better perks um, you'll be notified of that right away um, in the meantime I would love to connect with anybody on patreon so hop on over there and support my channel and support these videos that I've been making for the clarinet community in addition, last week I did a collaboration video with clarinetist Lori Blanchett. She started a YouTube channel of clarinet orchestral excerpts and she records various uh, duet excerpts. So far I think it's mostly duet excerpts and sometimes she does them by herself and sometimes she collaborates. And so last week we collaborated and we did the duet excerpt from Smetana's The Moldau. So it's a very beautiful duet excerpt and she has a play along video too. So you, she eliminates each part and you get to play along with the part. So if you want to do some great play along stuff of orchestral excerpts, I highly recommend checking out that channel. So I'll put a link to that below. All right, so if you guys practice the excerpt from last week, then you will be totally ready for the excerpt this week. I actually took an excerpt of a little etude from the Lazarus Method Part 1. Now, if you enjoy this, it's actually in the public domain, so you can go to imslp.org and download Part 1. I think this is on page 344. Now, if you're not interested in that, I'm including a link to a PDF for this, so if you just want to download it and print it out, just this excerpt that's that's totally cool too now again like I said this one is an A flat major which I thought would be appropriate for what you guys practiced last week now articulation is the main thing that I want to talk about today and you know what happens as we we tend to get higher this this excerpt sticks with um, the mostly the upper register and what happens as we get higher we tend to get kind of tense and it exposes tendencies that maybe we haven't heard in our playing in the lower register. So one of the big things is, um, is thinking about striking the reed rather than releasing the reed. And so I'm gonna give you five tips today on just, just refining your articulation to get a better sound. So the first thing is to just relax your breathing. And so not only should you be relaxed when you exhale, but you should be relaxed when you inhale as well. And so I like to just think of a nice big clarinet breath. If you take a nice relaxed breath in, you'll be able to breathe naturally. And so if you think about your playing as being a natural part of breathing, life is gonna be so much easier. Now, that brings me to the second point. You still have to support your sound. So if you're completely relaxed when you breathe in, and then you go to blow and you find yourself 
kind of like, well, I don't know how to relax and blow at the same time, that's because you're not supporting. So you, you have to also use your core a little bit to create that speed of air, but your upper body, your throat, your neck, your shoulders, everything else should be very relaxed. And so it should, it should just feel like, it should just feel a little bit like you're blowing out a candle. So that's what I recommend. Do some breathing exercises, breathe in and exhale. So now that you have this natural breathing process going, you wanna make sure that as you blow, this is point three, you really center the air and aim the air for the read and just as focused as possible. And so here we say to play with higher tongue position, but based on whatever your pedagogical tradition is, you may have different views of that. Um, however, the main thing is you want to make sure your air is centered and focused and going right at the reed. So you breathe in. And breathe out, going right at the reed. Now, the next thing is articulation. So the air that you use when you're tonguing shouldn't be that different from when you're playing legato. I think this excerpt is really good because it has a little bit of both, right? You have a little bit of legato and that'll help you check in to see if you're changing anything when you do the staccato as well. And so you can play, play through this and hopefully be a little more aware of parts where you like to tense up or do weird things, okay? So you should be just as relaxed between the two. So. This, at this point, you want to make sure that when you articulate, you're not hitting the reed. We don't strike the reed, we don't punch it, we don't ta or d. That's, that's just something we teach fourth graders because that's the only syllable that they can do, right? So um, you guys are all advanced enough to know that when we articulate, it should be a series of releases. And so if you think about tonguing as releasing, then you can coordinate that with the natural exhalation of your breath. And you can just exhale very naturally, very effortlessly, and get a nice clean articulation at the same time. So when you're doing that though, you don't wanna go way down, you don't wanna pull your tongue back because that's gonna cause that striking motion. So. A great analogy that is actually at the very beginning of the Cal Staccato study book, if you guys have that, he actually says that articulation on clarinet should be very minimal motion of the tongue. So, and he says the, the movement of the tongue should be no further than the quarter of a blink of an eye. So that's like, that's like that much. That's like not very far at all, right? So all you need is just enough room to let the reed vibrate. And that should also be the same point, like however far you go back, that's the same point where your tongue should be when you're playing legato as well. And that's how you can get that really sweet, pretty legato. So it's really not that different. And your tongue is just kind of doing that really small range of motion. You're just blowing a constant stream of air. And bam, you've got a nice, beautiful sound in your articulated playing. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and play this for you. I think it's a lot of fun, it's super cute, it's such a nice little clarinet -y tune, so I hope you guys enjoy. That was so much fun. I really enjoyed playing that for you. I hope you guys enjoy practicing that this week. Let me know your thoughts below and that's pretty much all I have. So have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you guys next week and as always, happy practicing.